Hey guys, how you doing? So my name's Andrew, Drew or Droopy Drawers, and uh, you know, three years ago I put out a tutorial, a long time ago, explaining the use of display captures to do kind of like a kaleidoscope effect, um, using a webcam to do like an infinite repeating pattern. Um, sometimes I realize that, you know, not a lot of people have extra, you know, monitors or things to utilize that effect so i figured it would be a good time to come up with a brand new tutorial um basically that would teach you how to like create automated effects without the need of extra monitors and uh it's something that can be found using the shader filter the shader filter has been something that i've been extremely excited about it's an obs studio plugin um you definitely want to be able to check it out it's absolutely free i will provide the download link in the description um so the display capture if you're looking at it kind of looks like this it's obs shield shader filter version 1.0 um so basically what you want to do is go ahead and click the download button um, and what you're going to want to do is just extract that into your obs uh plugins folder um so if you wanted to go ahead and find that um, if it's installed in the right location, it'll look like this. If you have trouble finding where to put it, um, I will also put the file path to where I have it. It's program files, OBS studio data, OBS plugins, and it should be dropped in. Once it's installed correctly, it should say OBS shader filter win. Um, definitely with dashes in there. If everything's installed correctly, you'll see data OBS plugins. Um, so in the data folders, you have OBS plugins. These two folders, shader, filter, and transitions. Um, so the examples in here don't really mean much to you until you actually apply these within OBS Studio. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show everybody basically how to um, add these effects to your webcam, uh, but these can also be applied to uh, game capture, display capture, uh, MP4s that you've pre previously dropped, GIFs, just about anything that like can receive um, a filter in OBS. Um, so let's go ahead and create that now, and uh, we'll build some examples as we go. Um, so basically what I have is, I have a stream PC. Uh, so taking a look at my setup, this is doing the recording, this monitor right here on a stream PC. Um, so basically, what we have is um, a blank scene on OBS right here. So you should be able to see everything. This is what you would have if you have the OBS Studio plugin, um, like shader filter installed correctly, and you're just basically starting off. Obviously, you'll have your own scenes and everything included already up to this point. Um, but what we're going to go ahead and do is, you know, pretend like we're starting everything um, brand spanking new. So uh, we've got our scene and we're going to go ahead and add a source. We're going to do the video capture device because I'm going to apply these uh, shader filters to a Logitech Brio that I have hooked up. Um, shouldn't have any issues if you have like a C270, C920 or even the Elgato Cam Link with like an uh, Sony A6000 or something. Uh, it doesn't matter, this filter can be applied to basically any media file or video capture device. Um, so let's go ahead and add a Logitech Brio here. I should go ahead and connect. You can kind of see my green screen wall in the background. Um, what we're gonna do, the first thing you should do, um, let's go ahead and change the aspect ratio of this, this uh, video capture device. Let's go um, standard 1920 by 1080. And this should go ahead and activate the camera so we're full screen. Um, second step, we're going to go ahead and chroma key this. Um, this is going to go ahead and remove that back background. Um, so filters, chroma key. If you got a good green wall and solid lighting, it should automatically cut everything out. Uh, if you have trouble with that, please, there's thousands of YouTube tutorials on how to, you know, use a green screen, uh, especially with OBS. So now that we've got this as our, our, our canvas, what we're going to do is, uh, start applying some shader filters. So. We're gonna go ahead and do, um, well, let's see. Let's let's add a filter to this Brio that we have added. Uh, so we're gonna right click on the video capture device, click on filters, and we're gonna go ahead and hit the plus sign. And if you install the plugin correctly and restarted OBS, you should see a shader filter option right about here. It's under scroll above sharpen. Um, so this right here, you'll notice when you apply it, you've got shader filter expand left, expand right, expand top, expand bottom. Uh, so this is where you can kind of tell the filter where to originate from uh, if you're using something like a pulse effect or a boom effect, but uh, we'll get into that later. Um, so one thing that a lot of people using this plugin might not realize is that um, there are two little checkboxes here. 
override entire effect and load from file. So what you're going to do if you're looking for specific effects is you're going to go and find those files that I showed you earlier after you installed the plugin. Uh, let's go ahead and pick one now. So let's load from file and we're going to browse. So because this was the most recent um, folder that I was in, um, it's putting me in this OBS Studio bin 64 bit. Let's go back to the beginning and let's find it again. So I have OBS Studio installed on my PC on my local disk C. It's under program files x86. We're going to go ahead and look for OBS Studio. We're going to click on data, OBS plugins, and then we're going to go and scroll down to OBS shader filter win. Now in data, OBS plugins, shader filter, and examples, um, you're going to see these uh, shader filters in these examples have two different types. There's a shader file and an effect file. So let's do something um, that'll kind of show you what's going on very easily. So um, a lot of people might want a shake effect, you know, pretending like you're an earthquake or, um, well, let's just go ahead and apply it and uh, kind of show you what it does. So you notice my webcam is completely gone right now. That's absolutely fine. So what we're gonna do, make sure to write this down. If you're using an effect type, you're gonna wanna click this checkbox, shader filter override entire effect, and click this button that says shader filter reload effect. Now you should be able to see your camera again. This is very important as those two different types that you need, absolutely need um, to click this checkbox. If it's an effect, you unclick it if it's a shader. Um, so this is completely automated. This doesn't require display captures. Um, you can run it in the background. And what you do is kind of just like play around with the numeric values. Um, so if you kind of just play around with the numbers in each one. I mean, let's just go ahead and type 10 at each one. And let's click randomize movement and warble. You'll start to notice that the camera is shaking a little bit. And you'll also notice that under minimum growth pixels, I left it at zero, uh, meaning that's like the starting point. And then the growth pixels is kind of how it just like, how far it zooms in and out when it's sh uh, shaking. If I were to do the max growth pixels and put it at 100, you'll see it start to shake a lot more. So this is an effect that you can actually bring into your webcam, your display captures, anything like that to provide a shake effect. Um, play around with the numbers to get a little bit more comfortable with what you feel looks okay. Um, so subtle effects kind of do a little bit more, um, especially if you're entertaining people for hours, it's less of an eyesore. Um, and what you'll want to do is be able to um, trigger these effects, you know, differently. I, I highly recommend just adding these filters to groups. Um, if you don't know how to add like different filters to groups and things like that, um, uh, basically all you would do is under each scene, uh, group selected items, you should be able to apply individual filters to these groups. Um, so shader filter has a lot of different options. Let's go ahead and, uh, take off this shake effect and let's go ahead and show you how to apply a shader effect. Um, so zoom blur is kind of like a fun one. Uh, this one is a shader file. So remember how I said that, uh, if it's an effect file, we need to have the first checkbox marked. Um, let's go ahead and uncheck it, reload the effect, and we should be able to see it. This is a shader. Shader is unchecked. Effect is checked. Um, so what we're going to do is basically figure out how many samples we want to do this kind of, uh, you know, zoom blur for. Uh, so let's do sin. Uh, 10 samples, 10 magnitude, and uh, let's put a speed percentage of like 50. Um, so you notice that now my webcam is starting to pulse. You can either make it ease, so it's taking that like minimum value and going all the way to the end, kind of like self-automating. Um, you can also make it glitch, which will kind of make it, you know, it'll pop. So it works really, really well for, um, you know, adding to scenes where you're playing music or maybe um, in between transitions and use your creativity on how you want to use these. But I highly recommend um, just getting familiarated, familiated, blah, blah, blah. getting familiar. I can use words. I'm very good at it. <laughs> um, getting familiar with this folder, the examples from the OBS shader filter. Um, just know the difference between a shader file and effect file um, and how to make sure that they work. Uh, just start playing around with numeric values when you're applying the filters 
and you should be good because um, all of them kind of have their own little thing. So, you know, even this, uh, there's, there's a drunk shader. Uh, so if we do 10 on all of these, uh, let's actually keep that at zero. Uh, let's do max brightness at a uh, hundred and pulse speed 200. Let's do. So when you're applying these, you're going to want to basically figure out what works for you, what kind of effect you want. Um, I like these filters because you're not having to worry about uh, extra CPU usage unless you're, I mean, honestly, some of these can uh, take up little CPU usage if you're typing in numbers like 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, but there's really no need. Uh, but these are going to be the most effective use of your CPU if you're trying to add effects. Um, but again, be careful with them. They can be disorienting, um, but they can add a lot of creativity. Uh, so the main thing I wanted to like be able to show you guys is how to install it and just how to make sure that you can get effects working and how you can get the shader types working as well. Uh, just play around with the values, see what you can come up with. Uh, there's everything from adding, you know, little PNG files to animating movements. Uh, but, you know, maybe I'll make another tutorial about that if enough people are watching this video. Um, feel free to you know, comment like and do all the other fun stuff that youtubers might say uh in the middle of their video or towards the end but uh hopefully this helps i appreciate you guys thank you